Hi everyone, in this episode we're going to continue our look at the transform component, looking at the differences between global object and local space, as well as how to parent, rotate, and scale objects from script. So I have the simple scene set up with a sphere and a cube object, and I'm just going to go up to the top here and make sure that I'm in global space mode, as this is what I want to talk about first. So as you know, our 3D space is defined by three axes, the forward Z axis, the vertical Y axis, and the horizontal X axis. Global space refers to the fact that the directions of these axes are constant throughout our world. I could rotate an object to face a different direction, but the global directions of course still remain the same. Let's now change to object space. The label here says local, but you'll see a little later on why I prefer to call it object space instead. So in object space, all directions are considered from the point of view of the object. So having rotated the cube, forward is now in this direction, and the x-axis is in this direction. Let's have a little discussion about parenting. So I'll reset this cube object so that it's back to 0, 0, 0 in the world. And notice that the sphere object is positioned at 2, 0, 0. If I now grab the sphere object in the hierarchy and drop it onto the cube object, I've successfully parented it to the cube. So we say that the sphere is a child of the cube, and conversely, of course, the cube is the parent of the sphere. All that this means is that the position, rotation, and scale of the sphere are now all relative to that of its parent. So in the inspector, the values we see for position, rotation, and scale are all relative to the parent, and we call them local values. This is why if I were to move the parent, say, two units to the left, the position of the sphere in the inspector still reads 200, zero, as it is indeed still two units away from the parent on the x-axis. The sphere's position relative to the world, that is to say its global position, is of course at this point 000, zero, zero as we can see if I quickly unparent the sphere from the cube. I'll reparent the sphere, and let's look at what happens if I now rotate the parent. So of course the sphere rotates along with it. Looking at the values in the inspector once more, we can see that the local values remain unchanged, as despite the rotation, it remains two units on the local x-axis away from its parent. All right, now let's say that I rotate the sphere a little bit, so it's no longer facing the same direction as its parent. Here's a quick test. If I were to manually increase the sphere's z position in the inspector over here, what direction will the sphere move in? Forwards globally, forwards relative to its parent, or forwards relative to itself? The correct answer is forwards relative to its parent. So this is the distinction between object space and local space, which I alluded to earlier. Local space is relative to the parent, while object space is relative to the object itself. Alright, so I've reset the scene back to how it was at the start, and let's experiment with some of these things now through script. So I'll just right click, create a new C -sharp script, and maybe call this something like cube script. And I'm just going to attach that to my cube object, and then we can open it up. So let's say that we want to parent the sphere object to the cube object. The first thing that we'll need is a reference to the sphere's transform. So the easiest way to get this would be to just make a public transform variable up here, we can call this sphere transform. And then if we save that, because it's a public variable, it will show up in the inspector here, and we can just drag the sphere into that slot. And then in the start method, we just want to set the sphere transforms parent, so we can write sphere transform dot parent. And we want to set this equal to the transform of the cube. So since the cube script is attached to the cube, we can simply write is equal to transform. So if we save that and go into Unity, you can see that in the hierarchy, the sphere is not parented to the cube, but as soon as we press play, it will, it will be parented through our script. We haven't yet looked at how to rotate objects with our code, so let's have a look at that. In the update method, if we just write transform.rotation, you can see that rotation is stored as a quaternion value. Quaternions are a little bit tricky, and we'll definitely discuss them later on in the series, but Unity does provide a much more intuitive way of working with rotations uh, with the Euler angles variable, which you can see is just stored in our familiar vector3 format. 
So if we wanted to increase the Euler angles over time, we could just say transform.Euler angles plus equals, and we could create a new vector 3. Say we want to rotate it on the y axis, so we just say 0 for the x, and then for y we could say maybe give it a speed of 180 degrees per second, so we'll need to multiply that by time dot delta time, and then just 0 for the z axis. Let's save that and give it a try. So if we press play now, the cube is rotating around, and of course since the sphere is parented to it, that is rotating around with it as well. I think it's definitely worth mentioning that an alternative way of writing this would be to just say new vector 3, 0, 1, 0, and then to multiply that by the speed. So what you'll often see people do is, instead of writing it out like this, they'll use the shorthand vector 3 dot up, which, as you can see from the summary here, is just another way of writing 0, 1, 0. And uh, this shorthand does exist for all other directions, for example, forward or left, and so on. But let's just leave that at up. And if we go back into Unity now and just press play, you can see that it's still got the same result. But let's now grab the cube and just rotate it a little bit. And if we press play now, we can see that it's rotating around its global y-axis. Um, in other words, this would be rotating around its local y-axis, and it's instead rotating like this. So let's see how we could change that. So in Monodevelop, we can use the proper rotate method. So you can see this takes in Euler angles, so we can just pass in what we had before, vector 3.up multiplied by time dot delta time multiplied by 180. And now by default, the rotate method works in object space. So if we press play, we'll see automatically this is now rotating around its local y-axis. If we want to specify that it should work in global space, then we can just add a comma, and we can add this extra space parameter, space dot, and we can choose between self, which is object space, and world, which is obviously global space. So if we change that to world, and save, and press play, uh, we can see that we'll have the behavior that we had earlier. Now, last episode we looked at the translate method, and that method works similarly to the rotate method. So if we say transform dot translate, and say we just want to rotate vector three dot forwards, uh, multiplied by time dot delta time, and multiplied by some fixed speed, say maybe seven. By default, this will also be translating in object space. So we can see that if we press play. As this is rotating around, it will move forwards in the direction of the rotation. If I change the visualization over here to object space, you can see a little bit better what's happening. It's just following its own forward axis around and around. If, of course, we change this in the same way as the rotate method to be uh, space.world, we'll see that it now operates, of course, in global space and just heads off uh, along the global z-axis. All right, let's perhaps try setting the scale of our sphere object from the script. So maybe in the start method, we can say sphere transform dot local scale is equal to, and we can set this equal to a new vector three, say two by two by two, and this sort of alternative Shorthand, once again, for writing that would be vector 3 dot 1 multiplied by 2. So if we just try that out, when we press play, the sphere should increase in size, as it did. Um, finally, just to experiment with setting the position versus the local position, let's say that if the player presses the space key, so we can say if input dot get key down, key code dot space. Let's first say sphere transform dot position. So in other words, the global position is equal to vector 3.0. So in this case, if we play and press spacebar, you can see the sphere will keep getting reset to global 0, 0, 0. And uh, 
If, on the other hand, we change this to local position, you can probably figure out what would happen. When we press spacebar, it will just snap to the position of its parent, since, of course, a local position of zero indicates a zero offset from the parent. All right, that is everything for this episode. Thank you very much to those of you who support these videos on Patreon. I hope you enjoyed, and until next time, cheers.